R is a popular and free software environment for analyzing data. In this video, I will be showing you how to get started working with R. R is a free software environment for analyzing data, calculating statistics on your data, and plotting your data. It is the standard for statistical analysis in the sciences. One of its advantages is it has a large array of third-party packages. So in my field of expertise, there are packages out there for analyzing biological data sets. What probably most of my viewers are interested in is that there are also ways to analyze Minecraft data using R. Um, I'm working on one of those packages and there will be some videos about R Bedrock later on. R is also cross-platform. It supports Windows, Mac, Linux, and other systems. This video, I'm gonna tell you how to install it on Windows. Um, but if you're using Mac or Linux, you can easily find installation structures for those environments. In addition to R, I'll be talking about RStudio today. RStudio is an integrated development environment for R. So this includes an R console, a code editor, and a figure viewer are some of the important features about RStudio. The reason why I'm covering RStudio is that it's often helpful for new users to use R via RStudio because of all the bells and whistles attached to RStudio. And so I will also be showing you how to install and get used to RStudio. We're going to use these two URLs to download installers for RStudio and R. These URLs would be in the description in case you want to copy and paste from there. Okay, so we're gonna to go to the first URL. We're gonna click the download RStudio for Windows link. So this is gonna download our installer for RStudio. And when that's done, we're gonna click the R link. This is gonna take us to the site for downloading the R installer. We're gonna do download R for Windows. And then click base, because we want the base installer. And then from here, we're gonna click download R for Windows. Once that's done, we're gonna click our R installer and run that. We're gonna use just the defaults. Now that R is finished, we're gonna run the RStudio installer and we're gonna install that with defaults as well. Now that our studio is installed, we are going to run it for the first time. When you open our studio, you'll be greeted by three panels. The panel on the left is the interactive R console and terminal panel. The upper right panel over here is the environment history and connections panel. And the bottom right is the files, plots, packages, help and viewer panel. So as we use our studio, you will get a better handle on what all these panels look like. When you open a new R script, a code editor panel will also appear on the left side. There are two main ways to work within our studio. You can test and play within the interactive R console down here, and then copy and paste your code into the code editor to save and run later. The other way is to start writing um, an R script in the code editor and then use the run command and the source command to execute those functions in the console. So much of your time in R is going to be spent in the console. So this is where you'll run all your code and um, can be useful for you to try out new ideas before you write them into an R script to save for later. So first thing you'll see in this console is a little caret followed by a blinking cursor. This is where you will type your commands. And um, so in R, you will type a command, press enter, and then R will execute that command. So the simplest thing you can do in R is arithmetic, version one plus 100. And um, so R will take this one plus 100, it will execute 
it will return the answer, which is 101, and that'll be printed out on the next line. So if you type in incomplete command, like one plus, R is going to wait for you to complete it. And that's what this additional plus is here. It's waiting for you to finish the statement and then it will execute. So if you start typing a command and you want to cancel before you're done in RStudio, you can press escape and that will take you back to the um, caret without executing a full command. So when using R as a calculator, the order of operations is gonna be the same as you learned in math class. So if you do three plus five times two, you're gonna get out 13. If you want to change the order, you can use parentheses, three plus five times two, and you will get out 16. If your calculation produces really large or small numbers, the output could be in scientific notation. So if we take two divided by 10,000, the output's gonna be two e to the negative four, and this is a shorthand for saying two times 10 to the negative four. So two times 10 to the negative four, that's the same thing. So R has many built-in mathematical functions. So to call a function, we want to type its name followed by an open and closing parentheses. Anything inside the parentheses are called the function argument. So for instance, if you wanna calculate the sine of one, we would do sine parentheses one parentheses. This is gonna give us um, 0.84, which is the sine of one. If you do log of one, this is giving us the natural logarithm of one. Log base 10 of 10, that gives us the base 10 logarithm. We can also do exp exponentiation, so e do the 0.5 is using the function exp to 0.5. 1.64. So don't worry about having to memorize all these functions in R. Google is a good tool for you to look up and find them. Um, R also has a built-in help environment. If you want to know about a function, you can use the question mark. So you can do question followed by the function name. So we can do question sign. Press enter and this is going to pull up the help information for sign in our um, help viewer. So then you can read the documentation for sign. R also has built in operators that are used for comparing numbers. So you would use two equal signs if you wanted to test for equality. So this can be read as um, a test of is one equal to one. If you want to test inequality, the operator is exclamation point equal. So this stands for not equal to. There are also operators for less than, less than or equal to, greater than and greater than and equal to. In R, in order to assign a value to a variable, we use the arrow operator. So what you notice here is that when we ran this command, it did not print out a value, and that's because the value is stored in the variable x. If you want to access this value, we can type x, and then we get out the value of this variable. You can also, in RStudio, look over here in the environment, and you can see that the value of x is 0 0.025. You can access the value of variables within function, so we can do the log of x, and this tells us that the natural logarithm of 0 0.025 is negative 3.68. You can also reassign values. So if we do x is equal to 100, we see that the value of x is now 100. So assignment values can also contain the variable being assigned to. So we can say x is equal to x plus one and you see that x is now at 101, and then y is equal to x times two, and we see that y is now 202. The right-hand side of any assignment can be a valid R expression, and so the right-hand side is fully evaluated before the assignment occurs. So anything that is here on the right-hand side is gonna be fully evaluated before x is updated. 
One final thing to be aware of is that R is vectorized. This means that variables and functions typically have vectors as values. In R, a vector describes a set of values in a certain order of the same data type. So for example, one to five is a vector containing the elements one, two, three, and four. So we can use ve vectors in mathematical expression. So two raised to the one to five is gonna return us two, four, eight, 16, 32. We can also assign a vector to a value. So X to the one to five is a vector. And then we can use this in an expression and get the same result. So the last thing I wanna talk about today is how to install packages. One of the advantages of using R is the large number of packages that are available. And so you will want to get used to installing packages and utilizing them in R. The function for installing packages is install packages. We're gonna install the package praise. And so when you install packages, you want to put the package name in double quotation marks um, and then press enter. And so this is going to reach out to a repository. It's going to fetch the package and if necessary, compile it. And then it's going to install that into your R library. So once you have downloaded and installed a package, you will need to load it. And in order to load a package, we will use the library function followed by the package name. Now the package name now does not need quotation marks. So we can do library praise. And so what this is going to do is this is going to load all the functions from the library praise into our environment so we can call them. So if we want to do that, we can now do praise press enter and it will give us a little message to say how awesome we are. So last thing I'm gonna talk about is installing the learner package. So if you do install packages, learner, this will now download and install the learner package. The learner package is for writing tutorials for R. And when you install it, you will now get access to this tutorial panel over here that contains several tutorials that you can run that'll help you learn how to use R a bit more. So if we do say data basics and we click on that, this is going to set up a tutorial in this panel for data basics. So if we resize here, we can go over the tutorial. And so this is telling us that um, about data frames, and so we'd follow it. So what is a data frame? A data frame is a rectangular collection of values usually organized so that variables appear in columns and observations in rows. Here's an example. The MPG data frame contains observations collected in the US Environmental Protection Agency on 38 models of cars. To see MPG data frame type MPG in um, the code chunk below and press submit answer. So we come down here to the code, we type MPG, and we type submit answer. And then this is then going to execute and then tell us the result. And then the tutorial, we can click continue and continue on the tutorial. So this brings us to the end of today's tutorial. So today we've covered how to install R in R Studio how to use RStudio and a brief introduction into how to program in R. If you want to see more videos like that, please like and subscribe to my channel. I am planning on releasing additional videos on R, especially on how to use R to analyze Minecraft data and biological data sets. If you're interested in those topics, please subscribe and follow the channel. If you have any questions on how to use R in our studio, please join my Discord, Analyzing Minecraft. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions about getting things set up. If you're interested in using my our Bedrock Library for Analyzing Minecraft data, be on the lookout for a new video soon about how to install it. I do have a previous one from several months ago, but some of the installation process has changed since then. So I'm gonna work on a new video that clarifies a few things and hopefully makes it easier.
Remember, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments or join my Discord. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about using our Bedrock or using R or R Studio in general.